Hey, this is JT. Welcome to the backyard and welcome to Body Weight Strength. I haven't posted much content lately. Um, I live in California and if you haven't been following the news, the whole state's basically on fire. So it's hazardous to be outside. It's like the worst air quality in the world right now. And so I've been trying to stay inside as much as possible. And because all the schools are closed thanks to coronavirus, um, my kids are doing homeschool. And so I got kids running around the house. It's super loud all the time. It's not conducive to making videos. And so hopefully as things normalize, and the fires eventually, you know, God willing, go away, I'll get back on making content um, with greater frequency. And with all that being said, I did want to make a video um, talking about a piece of equipment that I own that I actually think is an outstanding investment, and it's the next piece of equipment that I would purchase if you've already got a pull-up bar and a set of gymnastics rings. If you followed my content for any amount of time, you know that with just gymnastics rings and a pull-up bar, you can get an outstanding training session, you can get an outstanding workout, an entire program that will train your body head to toe efficiently with just that. If there is one weakness or one area where there's not a direct um, body weight equivalent exercise, it's going to be when you're talking about hip hinges, there's not gonna be something that can just replace a deadlift when you're using only body weight. Um, but with a simple piece of equipment that runs you about $120 called a hyperextension bench, you can get very good hip hinge work in. Um, you can do hip hinge work with body weight training. I'll actually link you to that, and it's gonna be through different types of glute bridges, um, but it's still not gonna be quite as good as what you could do with a back hyperextension. And so I'm going to talk about how to use a back hyperextension um, bench effectively, and I don't like the name hyperextension bench because what that makes you think of or what it implies mentally is that you're going to be hyperextending the back and coming up into this big arch spine, um, which is not at all how you should use this piece of equipment. This piece of equipment is going to help you train the hip musculature, specifically your glutes, and it can help you train the glute medius, which is responsible for abduction of the leg or moving the leg away from the body and for stabilizing the femur. A weak glute medius, I've talked about it before in my content quite a bit, but a weak glute medius can lead to knee pain when you're running, it can lead to low back pain. Um, so specifically targeting your glutes to include the glute medius is really important. And I would actually go so far as to say the most important muscles in your entire body to train are your glutes and your hip muscles. And that's because you know we're bipedal organisms, we walk around all the time. And as we age and sarcopenia hits and you start to have deterioration, of the muscles throughout the hips, your stability worsens, um, you're more likely to fall and sustain a catastrophic injury such as a broken femur or a hip injury. Uh, and so it's really, really important to make sure that you are training your hips, your glutes. And so if you're not doing that already, if you're watching this and you're doing push-ups and you're working that upper body and you're blowing off lower body, that's a huge mistake. You should at least be squatting, you should be training your lower body and you should be training your body ideally in an even um, ratio. So for every push, every push up you do, you should be doing some type of pulling. So for every set of push ups, a set of rows. Uh, every time you train upper body, you know, once you've trained the entire upper body, so let's say you train push and then pull, you should go to lower body before you're pushing again. So you should try to train everything um, equally. So you're developing strength throughout the entire kinetic chain, throughout all the musculature equally. But specifically, make sure you train your glutes and your hips, like I mentioned. I'd be willing to wager that for longevity purposes, um, the hips are probably the most important muscles in the body to train, and they're probably gonna be the most important with regards to injury prevention. Without further ado, let me show you how this machine works. So the hyperextension machine slides right underneath my rack. Uh, all in all, it doesn't take up any additional floor space. I already have to have an area to put my rack, and so I just slide the hyperextension machine underneath my rack. Now I have a rack inside my house, which is where I keep the hyperextension machine. Um, because it is cloth top, I wouldn't want it outside in the rain. I do keep this outside in the rain. It's held up just fine for over a year that way. Um, but again, this I take inside the house. And so if you do invest in a hyperextension machine, I would suggest keeping it covered indoors, tarp over it, something like that to keep it out of the elements. That way it lasts. Now let me slide it out and let's get to business. And now what you're going to do on the hyperextension bench is regardless of the name of the apparatus, you're not going to hyperextend, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to come up until your body is straight at 45 degrees to the ground and you're going to maintain neutral spine and as you hinge at the hips you're going to let the body come down 
as long as you maintain neutral spine, you're gonna go down as far as you can while maintaining that neutral spine, uh, roughly in line with the red 45-ish um, degree angle you see there, and then you're gonna come back up. And so the key is maintain that neutral spine. As you come back up, you're gonna drive the hips down forward into the pad uh, of the bench. So let me demonstrate that for you. You're going to get into position, and you're gonna wanna make sure you're far enough up above the pad that you are able to bend, hinge at the hips, and come down, keeping neutral spine. You're going to come down, and then from here, what you're going to do is you're going to tighten those glutes, and you're gonna drive those hips into the pad. And you're gonna stop when you are 45 degrees relative to the ground, and then lower yourself back down slowly. Then you're going to come back up, and that's going to be your full repetitions. And the way most people perform this, which you're probably going to see often and what you don't want to do, you're not going to move quickly and you're not going to be uh, swinging, utilizing momentum. And so you'll see this often. Okay, this is what you're going to see a lot of the time. This is not what you want to do. Uh, it's putting undue strain, on, potential undue strain on the lumbar spine and you're going to get crap glute engagement that way. And so you're going to want to do it the way that I demonstrated. And I'll do that one more time nice and slow down and from the top of the movement when you get started your glutes should already be engaged you should take your fingers and feel those glutes and as you come down to the bottom of your movement and then as you come up again tightening those glutes driving those hips stopping here and that's a full repetition remember when it comes to resistance training you want to make sure that you are adhering to progressive overload and that simply means that you're adding reps over time or you're adding intensity in the form of weight or making the movement harder over time and that's to ensure that you continue to adapt in strength and in hypertrophy. Now with this, you can do the standard hyperextension the way that I showed you, uh, and you can add repetitions to that obviously, or you can scale that to make it more difficult. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to scale that without having to add additional weight. And so what you're going to do is, you are going to, on the eccentric portion of the exercise, you're going to lean to one side. So you're gonna lean to the left, for example, and you're gonna go down to the bottom come back up and then the same to the right and you're gonna get a better view of this if I'm facing the camera directly so that's why I'm doing that so I'll go ahead and show you I'm gonna put my hands behind my head although that's not necessary and I'm going to come down to the left and then I'm going to come back up and that's gonna make one repetition now the opposite side and what you're going to do when you're doing these to the side is that you're going to make sure that you are still engaging that glute and driving that hip into the pad and what you're going to notice is the intensity is a lot higher when you go side to side like that because the majority of the pulling is being done on one leg and the other leg is essentially working as a self spot now another thing you can do from there you can take one leg out of the stirrup entirely and you can go straight down and then this is another way to scale that intensity since you're only able to pull with one leg. Another way that you can scale the intensity obviously is to add a little bit of weight. So I've got a 10 pound plate here. I can demonstrate a rep with a 10 pound plate. But one thing that you might find when you do a standard extension, if you're having a hard time really engaging those glutes, grabbing onto something not too heavy like a 10 pound plate, uh, you could grab onto you know, a gallon of water or something like that if you don't have plates at home. Um, doing something like that will actually make it a little easier to engage those glutes and so you're just going to do it exactly the same way that I did the standard extension earlier. You're going to hold the plate to the front, keep your eyes forward, keeping the spine neutral. You're just going to lower yourself down and then up and squeezing those glutes and stopping when you get to that 45 degree angle and that's how you're going to perform your reps uh, holding on to a plate or some other object. Another option that you have to overload these back extensions would be with the use of a weighted vest. A weighted vest is a good way to overload your back extensions, your standard squats, your pull-ups, your push-ups, and it is going to help you overload by allowing you to add two and a half pounds at a time to whatever you're doing without having to learn advanced progressions. So maybe you struggle with one-arm push-up, maybe you struggle with some of these advanced progressions, and rather than having to put in the months on end that it can take to get to that advanced progression, you can just slap on a weighted vest and you can increase the intensity of your push-ups or your squats 
or in this case your back extensions. And so pretty simple. I'll do a couple of reps here with this weighted vest. Again, coming up to 45 degrees, stopping there, keeping neutral spine. Um, but that's the benefit of a weighted vest. It'll allow you to incrementally overload in a progressive manner without having to learn advanced progressions. Um, so that's the use of a weighted vest. I'll actually do a proper review on this vest probably next week, and I'll get that posted for you guys. But that's going to be it for my video on the hyperextension machine. Hopefully it was educational, and hopefully now you know how to use it properly to train your glutes, and you've got a few different progressions to help you scale the difficulty, even if you don't have the benefit of weight and you don't have a weighted vest. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. Click the notification bell so you don't miss any new content. And as the fires die down and the air quality gets better, I'll get back to posting more efficiently. With all that said, thank you for supporting my content. This is JT. Peace out.